So on a sun splash day, the field looks wonderful and everybody's ready to go. Jason Marquis, four and one as he begins his Rockies career in the last couple of years with the Chicago Cubs. Also St. Louis and Atlanta. The playoffs always follow him. First pitch of the ball game is in there for a strike. You know, he made a great point. The playoffs always seem to follow him. There's guys that play on winners that know how to win, and it carries over to them. And I think when you get on a ball club that expects you to win and you're with players that have won, you win. And you know what, guys? Knew who Jason Marquis was obviously he's been in the big leagues better part of 10 years But now that he's on your team and the way he started George I think the position players they, you get a little extra bounce in the step man We got Marquis out there. Well, you're going to throw the, up a good number You're putting the ball over the plate which is going to result in ground balls. It's going to affect you could anybody on the field behind him Here's the 2-1 and that's on the ground easy play for Tulowitzki. get those fielders involved early, huh? Well, that's what you hope you hope you have an awful lot of ground ball out Lewis is retired, and that'll bring up Emmanuel Burris as we check the Rockies defensively. Spilly's in left, Fowler in center, Brad Hoff back in there, he's in right field. Ian Stewart at third base, Atkins will sit this one out initially. Helton on the other corner, Barmas and Tulowitzki up the middle, and Chris Ionetta behind the plate. Your Victoria did the catching last night, man, he had a big night. Boy, did he ever. A long home run to right field off of Randy Johnson. RBI single as well, scored three runs. That pitch misses down and into Burris. You know, George, watching Marquis pitch on a regular basis, and you know, we'd seen him a bunch in the past, naturally. This is a three hopper at Barmas. He's got the middle guys involved. I always looked at Marquis as a guy with, with, with a good sinker, and he worked 88 to 90. What we found, George, is he'll, he'll buzz you 91, 92, 93 if, at if times. If he needs to, it's there. The only problem, it just reduces the sink on the fastball when he does that. I think the one thing he does great is he changes speeds off of the sinker, 86, 90, 88, 92. And that allows him to pitch with an extra pitch, basically, is what it's doing for him. I think this is the toughest out in that giant lineup, Pablo Sandoval. He had a double off the wall last night. One for four for Sandoval. Well, you mentioned his daytime numbers, 18 and five overall in his career in the daytime. Well, guess what? Four and so far this year. Deep left field and yeah. leaping and making the catch is Spielborgs. About five feet to the left of that 390 mark. So a high fly ball. That ends up dying in the glove of Ryan Spielborg. So one, two, three, first for Marquis. Bottom of the first inning, and the Rockies hope to duplicate what they did against Matt Kane five days ago, where they beat him five to one behind a complete game performance from Jason Marquis. Here's Clint Hurdle's batting order. Dexter Fowler has become a fixture atop things in center field. Tulowitzki will be in the two hole. Todd Helton is hot as anybody in the game. 
Nine game hitting streak, 529 average, and a pair of home runs. Brian Spielborg's hit a couple of home runs off Kane in their last meeting. Brad Hopp, Chris Ionetta, Ian Stewart, Clint Barmas, and then Marquis. Here's Fowler, and he takes a fastball high from Matt Kane. Kane, a 24 year old, originally from Alabama, lives in Tennessee. He's a 24. We've been saying his name a long time. Yeah, first round pick, a guy that came to the big leagues at a very young age that could pitch. They had a couple of other guys too. Madison Bumgarner's uh, down there. A guy named Rick Porcello's and our excuse me, Alderson, Tim Alderson out of Phoenix. Those are two of the better pitching prospects in baseball. I mean, the Giants. You talk about the rich getting richer, George. They have them down in right now, pitching in the California League because of the cold weather to the East Coast. They'll soon move to Double A. Although Modesto beat Madison Bumgarner the other day, one to nothing, his first loss of the season. Big lefty with a power arm. Bumgarner was 15 and three last year. Both of those guys, former first round picks. Here's the 2 2 to Dex, and then he fouls it off. Dex was telling me before the ball game one of the areas that he's focused on of late because he's getting busted in a little bit. And seeing the slider down and in is getting that front foot down early. Outside three and two. Fowler in the ball game last night, two for four, couple of RBIs, scored a run. He started 14 of the last 16 ball games. Ball four. So a nice at bat for Fowler, and he'll go to first as Tulowitzki will come to the plate. Let's take a look at the fidelity scouting report on Mr. Kane. Fowler is a guy with a lot of speed, but Kane is a guy that's very quick to the plate. You can see the times here at 1.05 to 1.26 with a guy that can throw behind the plate at Molina. He'll like to work the fastball and slider away. He will throw in a change in the middle of the plate, run the fastball away from the left-handers. The thing you have a little success, he'll supply a little velocity when he gets it up to 94, and he has a tendency to ride it up out of the the strike zone, and that's where he got hurt against Spielboards. He is also a very good fielding pitcher. He's a good athlete. Right now, Dexter Fowler's doing some gardening off camera. Well, early on, out. early on in a game like this, see how you can see the dark spots in the dirt. That's where they water the infield. So a lot of times it can still get a little gummy early in a game before the sun dries it out. Doesn't help you get the proper footing at first base to try to steal a base. So you dig down until you get a little dry. Then he cleats up. This is a kid, George and Kane, that never seems to get run support. And I know the Giants have been challenged offensively the last couple of years without Bonds, but even in 07, when Barry was still around, he went 7 and 16, but he had a 365 ERA. Well, 32 and 44 in his career. And you look at those numbers 6 and 5 in his week against the Rockies, 333. You're right. He doesn't get a lot of run support with the kind of stuff that he has with a good lineup. His record of 32 and 44 could be the, the, just the opposite of that. Absolutely. Been a double figure winner only one time. That was you know six when he went 13 and 12. As George was saying, career key, career ERA of 374 coming into the year. Not so much as a thrower as he was his first couple of years in the big leagues. More of a pitcher now. There goes Dexter, and it's fouled off. You're talking about hitting behind a base stealer. I had an interesting conversation yesterday with Carney Lansford, and he oftentimes hit behind Ricky Henderson. And depending on who was pitching, you see the jump by Dexter. That wasn't a big jump. Carney, Carney would tell Ricky, hey, listen, this guy's nasty. He goes, I can't take many tonight. I don't, I don't want to hit with two strikes with this guy. But there'd be another guy who'd go, you know what, Ricky, I'm going to be real patient because I don't mind hitting behind in the count with it with a different pitcher. Well, Lou Brock, who I played with, second time all all time base stealer. He'd tell the guys, and, and, and when he was going to go, he either covered up the CTL, the St. Louis on his hat, he'd put one hand on a knee. This is when I'm going to try to get my stolen base right now. I know that with uh, Bobby Denier and, and Larry Boa, a lot of times Boa would tug on a pant. He'd take the bat, knock the dirt out of his cleats. I'm taking the pitch. 
There goes Dex, and this pitch is fouled off also. So there is that communication between batter and base stealer that happens, and I, and, and I understand what Carney's saying too. That uh, I got a nasty guy on the hill, I can't get deep because he's going to hit me with that slider. Regardless of whether you steal second, I don't have a shot to knock you in because I'm going to be on the pine. Very good mistake hitter, Carney, Carney Lansford. I'll tell you that right now. Aren't all the good ones good mistake hitters? Well, yeah, but I mean, you, I tell you what, I mean, that's even with the fastball and a breaking ball count, you could make a mistake with it. And, I mean, the guy just nailed it. You know, I don't think that was a bluff. I think he shut it down. I think Dexter, and there, there's some maturity. I don't think he got the jump he wanted, George, and he shut it down after two strides. Well, Kane that time was very quick to the plate, quicker than he was the previous two. See, as soon as he starts to, you see him trying to tilt, and then that ball's already gone. When that leg had already almost hit the ground of Kane, he had just started his step. 3-2 he's going, and it's fouled off by Tulowitzki. Tulo last night was one for five. He hit the ball hard, got a double in his last at bat to the gap in right center field. He grounded into a 6-4-3 double play, but it was a line shot one hopper. Struggling with men in scoring position as well. Obviously, Dexter's not yet in scoring position. He's too gifted offensively. He'll remove himself from the early season doldrums. Ball four. Dexter that time, he was going to get 3-2. And he spun out a little bit. So that dirt. Dig it in there in the uh, 20 feet out around first base. It's getting chewed up a little bit. Here's the defense for San Francisco. Lewis Wynn and Sheerholtz in the outfield. Sandoval at third, Arebe at short. Burris and Aurelia on the right side. And Benji Molina is behind the plate. So the Rockies have two on against Kane, both on walks. And here's the hottest hitter in the game, Todd Helton. Kane's only had 17 three ball counts in his last five starts. He's already walked two. And boy, that Not breaking anywhere. pitch, he hadn't been anywhere near the zone with it. Last night, Todd Helton had three hits. Here's two of them. This against Randy Johnson, a slider. He short hopped the wall. And then later on, George, a 14 pitch at bat. And then he went deep against those serious Matos. That was a classic, classic at bat. What did he foul off about? At seven pitches? I think he had a total 12 pitch at bat when he did hit that home run. Todd Helton just 11 hits shy of 2,000. You know, speculation whether or not he would play today, day game after a night game, but he's in there. 2 and 0. Man, he is in a perfect position right now. Kane can't get the secondary stuff over. Fastball count for Todd Helton. He's right. going to look inner half, you would think. Right now, he's not getting a lot of the fastball over either. Ten balls, six strikes. Outside, three and oh. It's about time for a visit from Dave Rigetti, their pitching coach, I think, if he walks Helton. Nobody out, two on, bottom of one. Well, takes the 3 0. Spielborg's on deck. Helton pulls it toward the hole. Aurelia comes up with it. They get one there on the first double play. Todd got it off the end of the bat. So now Spielborgs will come up. Two outs and a man at third base. Last night, Spielborgs hit the three hole. Helton hit four. And this afternoon, they're reversing it. And the main reason is you want to separate the lefties with Jeremy Affelt down in the bullpen late in the ball game. So Bochi can't bring him in and face lefties back to back in the middle of the Rockies lineup. Well, he's the type of manager, too, that he'll have to save the spot of that left hander. It won't be in a sixth, it'll be in a seventh, eighth, or ninth, where he's got to have that one out to get out of the inning. Spielborg's, too. Uh, you mentioned it early, the success he had against Kane to put him in when in this position in the batting order. A couple of home runs, one to dead center, one uh, to lead the ball game off against Kane. Tell you what, it was a pretty special day. 
San Francisco for Ryan Spielberg today. He faced Matt Kay. Fastball in her half. And see ya. Ball got out of here in a heartbeat. A line drive to left field. Came up later in the ball game. Got a hanging slider with dead central with it. Down over the head of Rowan. In that area in center field. A two run blast for Spielberg. And it's 3 0 oh on Spielboards with Brad Hopp on deck. Came 22 pitches into this first inning. Just eight pitches in the strike zone, 14 out of the zone. Cut them loose here, George? Absolutely. But make it a pitch inside your strike zone. Yeah. I mean, all every batter he's faced, he's been in a three ball count today. And this is a guy, you look at the numbers of Spielboards against Matt Kane, they're pretty good. You know, this is a guy you, you want to have swinging the bat right now. And there's no reason not to. Two home runs, 750 average. Let him swing it. Three balls and two strikes. Rockies with runners in scoring position, now fourth in the National League at 276. See three ball count on all the hitters so far. 276 is exactly what they hit in 2007 in the World Series here with runners in scoring position. Down low, third walk of the inning. And now Brad Hopp, who has been sensational, not only this year, but really throughout his career, George, in these situations, two outs, runners in scoring position. As we look at Bird Automotive, keys to victory is Mr. Hopp walks up, and Mr. Betty heads to the mound. Marquis, obviously, I think he's got to have a good outing. He's been very good in the daytime. 4-0 this year, 18-5 in his career. The middle of the order. You're here right now with Hop and a couple of guys on base. The defense, because of Marquis Sinker, the defense will be involved in this game today because of that hard sinker. I just had him check a couple of things up. Matt came during the day this year, threw a one and one over three starts. Very good on run average of 3.15. So Brad Hopp, four for six this year with runners in scoring position and two outs. His overall numbers, terrific. Brad had last night off with Randy Johnson starting. And he gets a breaking pitch for a strike. Brad, two for 18 against Kane. The home run came a few days ago. Not easy, George, hit three home runs at AT&T. No, it's not. And particularly on the, the way the, the conditions were over there last weekend. You think about that. It was uh, drizzly. It was cold. It was even uh, increasing a whole lot more of it. Well, off of Kane, here it was. Brad Hopp. And, I mean, folks, this was a line shot. And right off of that roof, scooted up into the stands. Matt Kane just had to wipe his forehead. Hope some good things would start to happen. And they didn't in that start against the Rockies. Six innings, five earned runs. One ball and two strikes. It's kind of neat today. I don't know who sponsored it, but they had the weather uh, people here from Channel 9. They had about looked like five to 6,000 kids out here. Did a lot of tricks. It was neat to watch. Jeff Francis, a special guest for all the kids. They brought they, the mad they scientist get, out. They, they, they did. It was a science fair, and the Guinness... Book of World Records folks were here also. So many kids participating. Foul tip and it is held by Benji Molina. So three walks in the inning by Matt Kane. The Rockies could not, however, produce a run. We'll go to the second.
field check in with uh, our man down there where are you today there you are mark staff want to see if you were at your perch you are i am indeed drew thank you you were talking about jason marquis and how the playoffs have followed him in the big leagues well he's been a winner since day one he pitched in the 1991 little league world series for south shore staten island little league and in that world series his team finished third he threw two complete games, including a no-hitter against Canada in the third-place game. Then in high school, he wins the city championship in New York City, pitching at both Yankee Stadium and at Chase Stadium. I had a little sit-down with him. He told me that his dad was a great athlete, good baseball player, went to NC State for football, but sports has been in his family since day one. And as you guys said, he has been a winner, and even here in Colorado. Drew, George? And he continues to live in Staten Island, went to Tottenville High School in Staten Island. He was a tremendous basketball player. We've talked about that. He was a point guard. Benji Molina hits it in the air to deep left center field. Spillboard's going back, still going back, and this will reach the seats. So Benji Molina with his sixth home run of the year. And it's 1-0 San Francisco. I don't think Benji knew it was out, George. He stopped at second. I think he thought it was a ground rule double. Well, I'm not sure what he thought it was. And again, a long extension here. And I want to bring Mark Stout back into the telecast just quickly, Mark. What, what do you feel uh, wind-wise on the field? Because I'm looking at the flags. They appear in the outfield to almost be blowing into that left field corner. On the Hyundai cam, you'll see this home run again. Man, that wasn't off. I mean, he reached for it and a lot of strength there. Mark, what kind of wind are you feeling? Hardly any, George. A little bit of swirl here. You can see some wrappers round about the mound that have been flying through the infield, but there's really not much here on ground level. So that, I don't think that's an issue. But uh, up high, as you said, these, these flags are whipping in from left. George, I'm with you. It looks like it's blowing in looking at the flags, but the flight of both balls hit to left field. The one mm -hmm. last Sandoval. inning by Sandoval and the one there by Benji where he reached out over the plate was was maybe beyond fully extended if there is such a such a, a way of being. And that the ball flew out as if it was blowing out. Watch the swing path again. Well, it's a long swing. He got a big swing anyway, powerful swing, but it's out in left center. I'm looking at those flags up above in center field and above the scoreboard. And I'm just not seeing that much. And I think the reason Benji slowed down too, it thought it was at second, because the ball hit the stands and came back in again. Marquis, that is the third run in his uh, starts this year to be given up in the second inning. Fourth home run, he's allowed. You know, Molina, as Randy Wynn has got. Molina was 0 for 12 against Jason Marquis prior to that uh, big flop. So you figure that uh, it's probably in his corner. Something's going to happen. Look at this. We talked about this last night, phrase. Giants 11 and 0. Hopefully it'll be 11 and 1 later on this afternoon when they score first. And the Dodgers, they seem like they score first every night, 18 and 3. Well, the only team that's not near the top of their division when you look at all those right there too is the Cincinnati Reds. But, but they've played good and baseball. they played very good baseball. You better believe it. Kansas City Royals, surprise team for me. I mean, Grinky, what he's done, holy mackerel. 6-0, and oh, two earned runs in, what is it, 45 innings now, Dougie? It's a bunch. Cincinnati's over 500, 14 and 13. Brewers on a roll. They're 16 and 12. This is an easy play. A third for Stewart. Well, you're looking at Los Angeles, San Francisco, first and second in the West. Uh, you go over to the, and, and again, Chicago White Sox, 12 and 14 to score first. Their record very good. Those teams you were looking at. Rockies records very poor when the opposition scores first. They're one and twelve. Juan Arebe. And this is shot through the right side. Barmas was swung up the middle. So a base hit for Arebe. Todd Helton goes over and says hello to his former teammate. And Watts carved himself out a very nice big league career. Two outs, 
Uribe at first, and Nate Shearholtz will step up. He has started four of the last eight ball games in the outfield. And that fastball is down low. Home plate umpires Jerry Davis this afternoon. Brian Gorman is at first. CB Buckner at second. Mike Everett is at third base. This day game, one of five afternoon specials around the game today. In fact, there's one final already. Atlanta beat Florida 4-2. to two. Marlins will leave uh, South Beach and they'll head to Denver. Arrive here later on tonight. See St. Louis leading 5-2 over Pittsburgh in the seventh. Padres just underway with Arizona. And this is uh, two hopper to Stewart. Sheerholtz runs well. He's thrown out. In the inning, Benji Molina takes Jason Marquis deep. And the Giants have a 1-0 lead, middle of two. That Ian Stewart, Clint Barmas. A reminder if the Rockies score seven plus, as they did last night, go to Taco Bell between four and six in the afternoon the following day. And with the purchase of a drink, you get four tacos for a buck. So today, folks, you can do that later on this afternoon between four and six because the Rockies scored 11 last night. You get four tacos for a buck with a drink purchase. That's a steal. 2 0, oh, Matt Kane has had trouble finding the strike zone. He was fortunate. To be unscathed after that first inning in which he walked three. Got a double play ball off the bat of Todd Helton. That helped immensely. 29 pitches in the first inning. Heavily on the ball side of things. Here's a 2-1 on Chris Iannetta. Leading the club with six home runs. That pitch away. Three and one. Ionetta with six home runs. Your Vitorialba with two. The Rockies leading all of baseball catching tandems with those eight home runs. Second now are the Giants because of the six from Benji Molina. Rockies are five and five, by the way, at home this year. And when they win, they usually put a big number up. They have scored at least seven in all five home wins. In fact, four of the five, they scored more than ten. Ball four. That is walk number four. Matt Cain's not long for this game. Well, they walked four in the last start, and in walking four, he didn't stick around in that ball game beyond the six. I mean, this is a big power guy. They could get it to 115, 120. I mean, Randy Johnson last night threw an awful lot of sliders, not fastballs, but more sliders, I thought, in a ball game than he did fastballs last night. You see Matt Cain. Yep, last three outings. Look at this, eight walks. That span over 19 innings. 
Struck out 13. Still have that same theory. If you get three and two on a guy drilling, cut down on the walks. It's real simple thing. Steering Stan Williams, first guy to tell us that. Season high, these four walks tie a season high for Mr. Kane. You have to anchor your stuff down over there. I got, got a bone to, I got a bone to pick with Stout. He said the wind's not blowing at all down there. And meanwhile, we got papers flying well, around. Toto, Toto just flew by and hit you're Houston not, in the mouth. You're just not, walked in. You're not down there. You're up here. Well, I mean, 200 he, feet below you. He's got to be blown down there also. Here's the 1 0 to Stewart. That's the pitch now, George. He didn't get it over initially, but now that's the pitch he's getting over. Not the fastball. He's getting the curveball over. Well, he is. And part of the reason behind that is he's getting on top of the baseball. He's not getting around the side of the baseball. And I, that's something that guys come into Coors Field have to make that adjustment to the game. There's another one. Matt Kane's numbers at Coors Field. He's got six wins against the Rockies, more against the Rockies than any other opponent. And this is fouled back. Stewart trying to get it jump started again, especially against righties. He's hitting 182, George, against right handed pitching. Just eight for 44. Four-year-old native of Southern California. Two balls and two strikes. Kane has already thrown 40 pitches. Nobody out here in the second. Giants have the lead on the Benji Molina home run. It's one nothing. Curve ball, shattered bat, and this is an easy double play. And Arebe still got the gun, doesn't he? Well, you know what? Ionetta came in at him, and a lot of shortstops will tell you they're going to get up on top of it. They're going to let it fly. Check in with Mark Stout again. Mark, where are you now? George, I walked out to left field here by the foul pole, and I talked to John, who's been an usher out here for 10 years, and he told me it's really not that breezy. There is a little swirl, and like you saw, Drew, there are some papers flying around, but it's not that bad. It was windier at the start of the game last night than it is today. It's, it's, but it's unpredictable. So it's well, Tell John to come up here <laughs> to the booth. Drew's having a tough time. We're having to anchor him down. I'm telling you. But now that I come out to left, the breeze is blowing a little bit this way, closer to field level yeah. than it is at first. You know what? It's Clint Barmas took a ball, and there's a curveball up and in. You know what, Stat? You're starting to sound like every weather <laughs> caster out there. Today was weather and science day Flip, here, too. I you know. know. Flip a coin. <laughs> It's like, oh, no. hey, it's hey, like hey, it's hey, like Spike. It's like Spike. Be nice on the weather, guy. I will, but it's like Spike Dykes, the former Texas Tech football coach, said. Two best jobs in America. Backup quarterback, you get to wear a hat and carry a clipboard. Nobody hits you. Everybody loves you. And a weather person, because you don't have to be right. That's a pretty good shot. Just passing along Spike Dykes' <laughs> story. Boy, that storm was supposed to go north of us, folks. We didn't realize we were going to get a foot and a half of snow. You better start talking about the game again. You're getting deeper. All right. <laughs> two and two on Barnes. <laughs> that, that hole's getting real deep. <laughs> I love all the weather folks out there. <laughs> there let's flip that coin around and go the other way. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Curve ball, and this is on the ground of Sandoval. Well, four walks for Matt Kane, but the Rockies have yet to make him pay. Two innings complete. Great to be at the ballpark. One nothing, Giants.
Dex. Take the sport out of finding local information with Dex. Find what you need when you need it in print and online at DexKnows.com. And by Burt Chevrolet, where the 09 Traverse is under $24,000. Jason Marquis to Matt Kane, and the fastball is in there for a strike. Benji Molina, a home run. That's the difference in this ball game through the first two innings. Top of the third. 1-0 San Francisco. And Matt Kane looks at that pitch away. Upstairs in the booth with George Frazier. And Jeff Houston, kind enough to join us from the uh, pregame set. I'm Drew Goodman. This ball is punched by Todd Helton and a base hit to right. Kane's not a horrible hitter. 125 average this year. Four home runs, eight RBIs, four doubles. And the story of the day in baseball, if you've missed it, is the suspension of Manny Ramirez by MLB for 50 games for violating the drug policy in baseball. And Supposedly it was not a steroid, but it was a, a substance that you were not allowed to have in your system. And uh, Manny was suspended. He is not appealing the suspension. He can come back July 3rd, I believe, on the Dodger schedule. It against, it's against the San Diego Padres. This is, and we discussed it during the pregame extensively, this is horrible for baseball. Because every time, Jeff, they try to further distance <laughs> yeah. themselves from... The issues of the late 90s, if you will, yep. into the first part of the 21st century. Another big name earlier this year was Alex Rodriguez. Another big name seems to, to fall. Well, and it's unfortunate because of all the guys out out there playing the game that have played it in the past or playing it right now that play the game the right way, respect the game, do everything right. And, and one guy, and a guy like Manny, goes out there and is tested positive. So it puts everybody in a bad light. The players, the manager, tra everybody. This is a line drive by Lewis to left. And Kane will go to second base. Now two on, nobody out. And well, here, I think at the top I, of the lineup with the two hole coming up. The thing I think that bothers me a little bit about all of it too that, that upsets me at times is that I think the minor league guys that are getting busted gets overlooked because they're minor league guys. Yep. And I think that there is still a problem. And yep. I think that guys are trying to take shortcuts to get there. That's you know, because it's Manny, it's Manny. You're going to get big headlines. It's A-Rod, it's A-Rod. I understand that, but it's more based on, on what they do for the game today and what they try to portray themselves with the Manny Wood and all that stuff that's going on to cheat the game of baseball. And I think it's just, it, it's unfortunate that the problem's not just in L.A., it's not just in New York, it's throughout baseball. It's still going on. There's guys still getting suspensions and going through with it, and it's a shame. And I don't want it snowballed or covered up by the commissioner to say we've got a handle on it, because obviously you don't. Well, Manny claims, and, and there are other reports that it was not a steroid, but Manny claims that he was given a prescription by a doctor and he takes the blame that it, that it wasn't checked out. But if you talk to any player in baseball, if you talk to trainers, we do this. Burris gets the bunt down, chance for the runner at third, and that goes past Ian Stewart. And here comes Matt Kane. Everybody's going to move up. That's going to be an error on Stewart. That ball was very catchable. Well, it is. I mean, that's one of those ones where the runner's going into you. You've got to make sure that you look that ball all the way in because that's your only responsibility is to catch that ball. It's not to try to catch it and then throw it over to first base. But let me ask you something. As a first baseman, you move from where the throw's coming from. As a third baseman, where do you position yourself on the back? you got to go right to that corner, right where he did, but you have to stay a little bit lower. The ball caught, cut on him just a little bit. It looked bit. like it cut a whole bunch. Yeah. That ball looked like a slider almost. Well, it's an error, and now there's two runners in scoring position. Your base hit from being down four to nothing. And you got a tough customer in Pablo Sandoval Jeff, let's at look the at, plate. Look at it one more time on his play over third base with Stewart there. We get to it real quick when his pitch comes. It's bunted. I thought Marquis, a good athlete. We've talked about it. Got off the mound in a hurry. He got to the corner. Lucina, watch this ball. Doesn't it look like it cuts a yeah, little? Right it looks like a sidearm slider almost. Well, yeah, and you can also see by Marquis' reaction. But I want to ask you, as an infielder, this ball's up into the seats. If you replay that again, read where the throw's going, 
don't reach but move your feet to it? Yeah, you can shuffle your feet. That's where you've got to be light on your feet. Much that's like why I first say base. take the lead foot and go to the ball. Well, the other thing is. When See, you watch what I'm talking about right here. But watch, watch stri- that front. Don't stride out yet. Right. That's the key to that There you play. go. Yeah, stride to the baseball. Stride after it. But it's, it's such a short throw that it's, it's pretty difficult to react that quick. Ground ball to help, and he's got one play, and that's to the bag. Fred Lewis, he would not have a play on. He's playing behind the bag. Lewis runs very well. Rockies were conceding the run. It's three to nothing. What's the guy's well, second to? Well, the, the other thing, too, is Marquis didn't break off the mound, so fortunately Todd was able to, even after bobbling that baseball, catch it and then go over to first base. Marquis just forgot to, to go over there. Yeah, Burris never moved. No. I mean, that was a... Situational at bat for from Sandoval. What just what you want? Get the run in, get the runner over to third base. Right, pull the baseball. Yeah. He did that, and Burris was caught napping, which is a big break because with one out, Molina, who's a fly ball hitter, would have a chance to drive him in. Now it's going to take a base hit to score Burris. Going back to what we were talking about with Manny a few moments ago, you talk to any anybody in baseball who's in the game. Now with drug testing, you talk to trainers. If you get something in the off season that was prescribed by a doctor and you're not a thousand percent positive, you can send it into your team doctor. You can send it to the trainer, have it checked out, and make sure that it is not on a banned substance list. So what Manny's saying doesn't hold water. Yeah, Drew, they got a list they give to you. Absolutely. You can hand There's a the website. Doctor. You don't have to send it in. You can just say, here's well, the list. Well, even well, if you don't trust though. yourself, reading, you know, all the oh, better. come on. Now you can read. There's a list. I mean, no, but, but I'm but saying that's a point. Yeah. Yeah. It's stupid. Exactly. Don't lay it off on that. You got a list you can walk in with. George, I'm just saying thing? there's, some, there's a many different ways that you can oh, double yeah. check whether but you read the list or know, go online or send it in. I just know from my own experience with Parker as a minor league player, they've got a book they give you with a list in it. This ball's hit well to right center field really well. And Hop's going to watch it sail out. Benji Molina with a two-run home run, his second home run of the ball game. And it is now the Giants with a 5 to nothing lead. Seven home runs for Molina. He's well, not you're... your prototype as a cleanup hitter, Huey. You played with him, though. He can hit. Well, he can. I mean, he doesn't strike out. He'll put the ball in play. And this time, instead of pulling it, he hits that one to right field, but still hit it on the sweet spot of the bat. And he just got those uh, big legs and hip and torso through the baseball. Is the ball flying here today? Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, because I mean, thought it was, was, was going right... to be off the fence yeah. or off the auxiliary scoreboard, but I didn't think it was going to get out. By the way, they gave the air to Marquis. Uh, you know After looking days. at it, I agree. I do too. That ball cut a bunch. You take care of those infielders. I am. You would know far better than I would, but I'm still saying I know it's 35, 40 feet away and it's coming quick, but I think he's got a catch. Well, I'm a pitcher and I say give it to Marquette. I mean, I'm okay. not throwing a pitcher's out of the body. I mean, it's just a big cutter yeah. on the ball. I'm going to agree with the side arm. I, I think it was an error on the pitcher, but at the same time, you ask Ian, hey, I probably should have caught that ball. But as you know, the game's coming quick, and you got a guy bearing uh-huh. down on you at third. You don't know where he is. You're thinking the ball's coming right to you. Yep. Smoke to short. He's still going to get the out. What a job by Tulowitzki. Rich Aurelia hit it as hard as you can hit it. Knocked down by Tula, and he throws him out from short left field. Big inning, though, for San Francisco. And Benji Molina once again was in the middle of it. Four runs for the Giants are up 5 nothing.
Windshields now in the parking lot. They're down five to nothing. If your windshield happens to be cracked, don't wait. Call Colorado's number one team, Elite Safe Flight Auto Glass, 303 287 5000, or visit safeflight.com. Jason Marquis will lead things off in the third. Matt Kane has walked four, but he's not given up a hit, and he's got two ground balls behind him. What a strange game because those four runs happened quickly. With Molina going to the opposite field. And I agree with what we've kind of been discussing this afternoon. We've been kidding about the wind and the weather. And I don't, I don't care what the flags are doing now, George. The ball's jumping. Well, it has to be going to right field to go out that far. I understood a little bit of the left field because of the wind tunnel. If it's kicked and gone that way. But to go right the way Molina did. I know he's a strong guy. But to go up the three or four rows up into those seats to right field. Uh, pretty difficult pitch for Marquis. Tip your hat. Hey, hitters practice too. One, two, and there's Matt Cain flashing the good leather. He got nine first place votes for Gold Glove last year. So he could feel Marquis got, and Dexter Fowler will come up. Time for our Geico quote of the day. Willie Mays, who celebrated his 78th birthday yesterday. When the Giants signed me, they gave me $15,000. I bought a 1950 Mercury. I couldn't drive. But I had it in the parking lot, and everybody that could drive would drive the car. So it was like a community thing. That was nice of Will. It is. Think <laughs> about how much you would get for a signing bonus today, though. I was just thinking about that. $15,000. What would he command out on the open market right now? You know what? What, what did Desher get? A buck 80? Yeah. That go along with the same exact thing that Reggie Jackson said one night here in the booth with me about 10 years ago. Nathy Perez hit a home run. He goes, uh, Frazier, how many home runs is he have? I said, 10. I go, how many would you hit here? And he goes, 70 or 80. <laughs> he goes, if that little guy can get 10, I'm going to get 80. I'm yeah. telling you right now. Well, that's kind of the same thing along with, well, Willie might be able to get out. And, well, you could throw about 100 guys' names yeah. out there. You know, I mean, think about a guy like Hank Aaron had 3,700 hits and still had 700. 755 home runs and still had 3,000 hits. How good was Hank here? That's one of my favorite lines, George, to, you know, talking about stats and the history of the game, that you could take all 755 home yep. runs away from Henry Aaron, yes. Huey, yep. and he still had 3,000 hits. Five, six hundred stolen bases. Yeah, that's what you know, people don't remember guy. about him. Well, he's a great player. Swung on a miss. Fowler's gone. And the Rockies have two outs in the third. Nobody on with Troy Tulowitzki coming up. That strikeout number two for Matt Kane. What you hope doesn't happen to you is that Kane now finds a rhythm Gets because the Rockies in. had him on the on the ropes in the first two innings. Yeah, and that's sometimes the toughest inning, George. You'll know that pitchers go out there that first first inning, especially they have trouble because the mound's different from what happened in the bullpen to this mound. If you don't get it to them early, they settle into that groove. And next thing you know, you look up, it's the sixth or seventh inning. You haven't scored yet. Yeah, and the only thing that may work in the favor is the number of pitches he threw in the first two innings. If you can just extend him a little bit. He's at 57 right now. You might kick him out after the sixth inning and hope to get into their early part of their bullpen, not the latter part. Dougie, is this 440, 740, or 240? What do you think that is? 240. 240, okay. Stolen bases for Henry Aaron. For Henry Aaron. He tried to increase Dougie's that all time. excited. Yeah. But Dougie's all excited because, well, that's all right. He's still a pretty good player. Dougie's all excited. Grateful Dead sang the national anthem. Then when they were outside the door, I said, were you more excited that the Grateful Dead was outside the door or that when you worked the four years with Tom Seaver? Let me guess. Huge Met fan, Tom Seaver. Grateful no, Dead. The Grateful Dead, I bet. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Here's the 2 1. And it swung out and missed 2 and 2. Yeah, I've never seen Doug move that fast with Bob Weir walking. Well, they're, they're giving you, they're getting, see, folks, they give Drew like these billboard cards. Drew always loses them, and Doug has to show them where they are and everything. Where he reads that, you know, this game brought to you by. Dougie's gone. Grateful Dead's in the hallway, and everybody's like, hey, where's billboards, Dougie? All Drew's like, look at where is it? It's gone. Tulowitzki swings through a heater. A very strong inning for Matt Kane. After control issues, the first two innings, he works a one, two, three, third with a couple of punch outs. To break the go with the dead.
on a tour of the aircraft carrier USS Midway. Plus, hang with uh, the animals at the world-famous San Diego Zoo. I'll have an interview with Brad Hopp and also Padres Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. All of that tonight on Rockies All Access from San Diego. Catch it at 6.30 or catch it again at 10. Yeah, a lot of fun uh, with Tony Gwynn the other day. He's the head coach of San Diego State University. And I said, you're pretty good on Friday nights. Those other two nights you struggled. And he started laughing. He said, yeah, the number one pick, folks, this year, Strasburg, out of San Diego State. Uh, again, a lot of GMs have said it. He could step right in and be the number two, number three guy. Tony Gwynn says he needs a little time in the minor leagues to get ready before he comes to the big leagues. I think he'll come very quickly, in my own opinion. I think he'll be forced to. But I know one scout that watched him, and he threw one pitch under 95 and several over 100. Yeah, he, he's hit 103 on the gun a number of times. Juan Arebe with a two and two count. Marquis needs a quick inning. And it's fouled off the slider. Steven Strasburg is who George is referring to. And he is universally regarded not only as the number one selection in this June's draft, but one of the great pitching prospects really of all time. Now we'll see if it pans out for him. This is on the ground to Stewart. And Ian throws out a rebate. Hey, don't forget about the Coca-Cola value pack. It's a great way to get to the ballpark and watch the Rockies. Four tickets, four hot dogs, four Cokes, and a parking all for $49. It's available through every home game in May. So don't miss out by your Coca-Cola value pack by calling 1-800-388-ROCK or just go online with the ColoradoRockies.com. Now, the Washington Nationals have the number one pick in this year's draft. The Rockies Seattle are too. number 12. Yeah, Seattle's, got, Seattle's got second pick. Washington actually has two picks early because they didn't sign Crow from Missouri last year, their number one draft pick. 1-0 on Nate Shearholtz. Shearholtz grounded the third his first time. The Rockies have three picks, I believe, in the first 34. Brian Fuentes being signed as a free agent to gain the pick there. Now, most people who follow baseball know the name Scott Boris, the super agent. Scott Boris is advising right now. Strasburg, so you assume he's going to sign with him. And well, Scott's got a lot, of the, a lot of the top amateurs. He's got right. Oliver over at Oklahoma State also as another guy that he's representing. You know, to pick up on your point, George, if he signs for, you know, a boatload of money, and obviously, you know, Scott is going to ask for a boatload of money for him, there's going to be a lot of pressure on that organization to get him to the big leagues quickly to get some return. This ball is uh, drifting to fairly deep right field. Brad Hopkins. That was off the end of the bat, George, and almost got to the warning track. Yeah, and I, I tell you, there must be a lot more wind up there than what Mark Stout's feeling. Two outs. Matt Kane coming up. Time for our athletic trivia question. Affleck! There's a familiar face. Rockies beat Randy Johnson last night. What pitcher with five-plus starts at Coors Field has the lowest ERA at 20th and Blake? There's Aaron Cook on the right. He's pitched well throughout his career at Coors Field. But when you sign a guy for a ton of money, you always worry naturally, about, especially with pitchers, George, you worry about injury. And say, boy, I don't, I don't want him to blow out Fresno or well, A lot of the guys in recent history that, that uh, you've seen sign for a lot of money. Luke Hoshaver was in the big leagues in a hurry with the Kansas City Royals, back in AAA, pitching well there. Max Scherzer with the Arizona Diamondbacks, given a lot of money. He's been in the big leagues in a hurry. Morrow with Seattle on the DL, coming off here uh, shortly, off the disabled list. Greg Reynolds of the Rockies. Second pick is uh, brought to the big leagues quickly. Matt Cain lines out to Brad Hopp, so it's a 1 2 3 fourth inning for Jason Marquis. Giants up 5 0. Help Spielborgs and Hopp when we come back.
Giants leading five to nothing over the Colorado Rockies. Todd Helton, who grounded into his three six four double play, his first time up. We'll take the first crack of the fourth inning at Matt Kane. This is a very important homestand. Yeah, it's early in the season, second month of the season. But the Rockies have played more road games than any other team in the National League's first real lengthy homestand, George. And starting the day now, after the win last night, four under 500, eight and a half back of the Dodgers. You need to, you need to have a very solid. Home yeah, and you wonder, you know, fans at home going, "Oh man, Manny's gone. What's going to happen to the Dodgers?" Well, an old familiar face is probably going to be inserted in the lineup in Juan Pierre. So now they'll have more speed in their lineup. Won't have the power and the fear of obviously of his bat that you have of a Manny Ramirez. But there's another element into the game that's going to happen. And the way Ethier has swung the bat, the way. Uh, Help me out, center fielder. Muslim. Kemp has swung Bad the bat uh, in center field. Right. James Loney hadn't started to hit the ball the way he normally does. If he gets hot, you get zero home runs. Here's Helton pulling it down the line. This is going to be cut off by Sheerholtz, and Todd will have the base hit. He's got a 10-game hitting streak. And that's a good start to the inning. That is the first knock for the Rockies against Matt Kane. High fastball, too, on the Hyundai Cam. You can see this ball right about his belt line. For Todd Helton, you're not going to get a fastball by him with the minor adjustments that he's made where the positioning of the bat, the upright stance, the slight leg kick, and the quickness to the baseball have all resulted in good things for, for obviously, for Todd Helton. Well, last night, the Rockies, George, didn't have a hit until the fourth inning. It was Todd Helton against Randy Johnson getting the Rockies' first hit tonight. They didn't have today. They didn't have a hit against Matt Cain until... Todd Elton in the fourth inning. Well, the big thing is stay away from the double plays. They had opportunities in the first two innings. The result, a couple of double plays. Billy walked his first time up. First start in the four hole this year. That misses two and up. Just 12 career at bats in the cleanup spot coming into this afternoon. That courtesy of Doug Marino. Doug just back from getting autographs. On his air guitar. This ball stroke to right field. Sheerholtz will make the catch. One out. And that'll bring up Brad Hop, and we'll also get an answer for you to our Affleck trivia question. So we want everybody to believe when we show a picture twice of the guy, we want everybody at home to think it's got to be Randy Johnson, the pitcher with at least five starts at Coors Field who has the lowest ERA, but it's not Randy Johnson. It's Jason Hartley. 272. Ubaldo has a 360. That's second. Marquis is 5 0 at Coors Field. He's going to need some help from his buddies in the dugout now Alphonse, uh, offensively. Get the Rockies back in contact with the Giants. Down and then 5 zip. Their earned run average of Marquis, 272 at Coors Field, is prior to today's ballgame. Hop struck out with runners at first and third his first time. Next pitch, George, will be number 70. Here comes the veteran, Rich Aurelia, over to visit with Matt Kane. He may say, I'm going to, I thought for a second he was going to play behind. Help George would hop up there, and Todd obviously not going to go anywhere. Well, I think he probably went out and told him, if you hang a slider and he hits this, he, is he going hits the ball. Him. You hit the ball with me like this with him up there, I'm going to come get you. <laughs> you just keep the ball away, hard sinkers, and hope he goes the other way. Well, he's holding him on initially, is what he's doing. And then he's going behind. Right. Him. And once he comes set, kind of gives one look over there, then he's making the move around behind him. Ishikawa was a guy the other day that would get off with help in the same distance, and then he would make his move off of the bag in front of Todd, not behind him. So we're really taking a little different approach going behind. That's just smart baseball. I mean, Todd's not going to steal. You mentioned Kane's quick to the plate. The Rockies are down 5 0. You got a left handed hitter at the plate with power and hop. It just makes a, a whole lot of sense to give yourself a better opportunity to cover that hole. 3 1, that's in there, 3 and 2. Brad just 2 for 19 in his matchups with Matt Kane. So far this year, Brad hitting 353 against righties. The strikeout earlier came on two breaking balls. On a 3 1 or 3 2 count, will he go back? 
Went fastball and it's lifted to center field. Randy Wynn makes the catch. Two outs. It's impressive the value ball though. Number two on that list ERA wise is 27 starts in this ballpark. Chris Iannetta walked his first time. One of four walks allowed by Kane. Hey, create your own Colorado Rockies collectible using your favorite photo at the photo store, ColoradoRockies.com. In three easy steps, you can make your very own Rockies memory. So go to ColoradoRockies.com today. Swing by Ionetta. Ball and a strike on Chris. Well, the one area he's handled the baseball very, very well when he's at the plate. And again, this is something that when you watch Chris hit, obviously from about this area up is where he hits a lot of the home runs. Now, some people are trying to feed him in here and here. So he's trying to go low and away with that fastball. Didn't work out. He left it up in the zone at 92. Three balls in a strike. Chris has always hit well as you look at Ian Stewart. Lionette has always hit well against the Giants. 358 career average. Four home runs, 20 RBIs, and 31 ball games. Here's the 3 1. Foul tip. Kane last year, 8 and 14 with a 376 ERA, 217 plus innings, a career best. Struck out 186. Three, two, ball four. And with Helton at second, I have added a first, two on for Ian Stewart. And you talked about the struggles of Stewart against a right handed pitcher. That has to change eventually, and it's going to change. I hope it's right now with one swing. You know, Ian got off to a good start. Some of that was his work against left-handed pitchers. But he's been mired in a slump of late. Don Baylor would like to see him be more aggressive. Here are the numbers. Very good against lefties. Not so good against righties. And obviously most of his work has come against righties. Today the 14th start of the year for Ian Stewart. He has started at four different positions. Well, what's a little bit unusual the other day like against the uh, San Diego Padres. And, I, and it's, it's, I've always been taught a guy that crowds the plate wants the ball in. Yet the other day against the Padres, he was called out on strikes on fastballs that worked right here on this part of the plate. Now I can see now he's a little farther away from the plate than what he has been in the past. See, they went back in there again, elevated the fastball with a little bit of pop behind it at 92. And he started to go and then just had to hold up on it. It was just uh, not, not quick enough to do it behind yeah. an account one ball two strikes that swing George is more typical of a guy who's not in a good place tough making your guess split when second you get a swing decisions. like that it tells me you guess you know you're guessing at what pitch you think might become and that curveball Kane's been on and off with it he's throwing some very good ones he's throwing some cement mixers also 83 pitches in with two outs in the fourth inning. Rockies have one hit. They have five walks. But a big donut on the scoreboard. Five nothing Giants. 
three and two. Not you, George. You said everybody, Drew. Clap your hands. Yep. Get into the that's, flow of the game. That's for the in folks. The flow that's for of the, the game, folks. Drew. Got to get excited. Who are sitting in the seats and paid to sit in those seats. You and I can't clap it. Yeah, we can. Not allowed to clap yeah, I don't at the see press a rule level. up here. Yeah, you can. So the runners will be off three and two on Stewart. Get a ball in the gap. Something good will happen out of it. This is a towering fly ball down the right field line. It's going to end up fouled by a considerable distance now. I still can't figure out the win. Can you? Well, you know, I, I can't tell because I'm looking out of center field at the rock pile. I'm trying to look up above there. It looks like he's blowing in the left field corner. And yet the wind, you know, again, there was some spin on that also off the bat as Stewart was out front a little bit. It looks like the wind took that to the right, which belies what the flags are doing. This is George kind of turning into a typical Matt Cain out, and with the exception of usually the Giants don't score any runs for him, in that he's in the mid 80s in the fourth inning, and in all likelihood, even if he gets out of this here, it's going to be five and fly. Well, he had five walks so far in this ball game. Six is the career high. He's done it a couple of times. Philadelphia the last time, all the way back at 05. And this is popped up and playable. Sandoval waiting, and he battles the wind. He makes the catch. Rockies will leave two more on here in the fourth inning. They did get their first knock. That from Todd Helm. Five nothing, San Francisco. Auto. And by Comcast Digital Home Phone Service, warm up to unlimited local and long distance, call 1-800-COMCAST. The day is pretty aesthetically. The scoreboard is not if you are a Colorado Rocky fan. The Giants up 5 to nothing. Benji Molina has been a hitting star. He's to up fourth this inning. A couple of home runs, a solo shot in the second, and a two-run home run in the third. Fred Lewis at the plate, single and scored in the third. Rockies, one hit and one error in the ball game. Five runs, five hits for the Giants. And that roller coaster ride, George, for the Rockies' offense is in full effect again today. Eleven runs last night. Nothing cooking so far in this. One. No, and again, effectively wild for Matt Cain. I think that's what's helped a little bit. A lot of the walks, high and tight, low and away, missing, and then all of a sudden make that nasty pitch. Right the ball gets flipped up, you know. I mean, that's a good pitch by Marquis on a one-two count to get the strikeout. Mm -hmm. Freddie Lewis. But I mean, the point is, is, is that he's around, a, not around the plate, and all of a sudden, whoop. Because Matt Cain's not like a, a guy that doesn't have nasty pitches, four nasty pitches. He does. 
And that, I think that's the biggest thing. Once he gets to that 2 0 pitch, that uh, good hitters count. All of a sudden, he makes a nasty slider or gets fastball in on the hands a little bit. How about this stat on Kane? I thought this was interesting. Dougie just gave this to me. Out of 109 career starts, 25 of those starts, he's given up three or fewer hits in those starts. 25 times, almost 25%. Three or fewer hits, yet has a record of 32 and 44. And in the run support he's gotten, as we touched on, has been abysmal throughout his career. 2 and 0 on Emmanuel Burris. Reached on a fielder's choice. And scored a run in the third. He bunted the ball with runners at first and second. Marquis quick off the mound. Fired to Ian Stewart at third. The ball went off Stewart's glove. Now, initially, they gave the error to Stewart as a run scored, and everybody moved up to second and third. Then they changed it and gave the error to Jason Marquis. It was a play that needed to be made. You would have had first and second one out. Who knows how the rest of that inning would have unfolded? Turned into a four run inning for the Giants. Two and two on Burris, a switch hitter. Pokes it to shallow left and Spielborg will have to field it on a hop. So he's on for Pablo Sandoval. The E470 Road Ahead is brought to you by E470 and Express Toll, the best way to save time and money. The Marlins are in over the weekend. Monday's an off day, and then the Houston Astros are in. You know, the Marlins have now gone 20 straight ball games, George, without having a victory from the starting staff. That is so surprising because of the staff they had. Volstead pretty good. Josh Johnson uh, really good. But uh, they haven't come up with a win in 20 starts. They right there 20. Wow. They lost again today to Atlanta 4 to 2. So they've lost six of their last set. St. Louis it's now a final. They beat Pittsburgh 5 to 2. Arizona up early in the fourth inning on San Diego 2 to nothing. American League ninth inning Kansas City shutting out Seattle. 3 0. Very nice story in the uh, opening weeks of the 09 season. The Kansas City Royals, Zach Greinke. And you know what? They are in. How about the Seattle Mariners? What they've been able to do? Crazy. That American League West wide open. Now, Texas in first place right now. They're playing Oakland scoreless in the fourth inning. Two strike count on Sandoval. Tip. You know what he's listed at George Pablo is 22. He's from Venezuela and he moves real well. I mean, he's, a, he's a very gifted kid. We've talked a lot about it. He's 5'11, 246 pounds. Uh -huh. You're saying it's a little lighter than that? No, I'm saying I mean, he, he moves well for a very stout kid. Well, really. Runner going and this is smoke to Barmas and he. Wow. he you know what? He's. Barber's like a little kid there. He slammed his spikes in the dirt. Rats, I can't get two here. What a play. Yeah, nice what a great play right there by him. It's just a slide dive and then trying to get to his feet to turn the double play ball. What the ball is just flat smoke. Sandoval hit the ball extremely hard. He slid and put that spike down to help him get right back up into the position to throw the baseball. Watch Barmy here, George. Watch. He's going to well, spin. Yeah. He comes up with it. He can't get him. Rats. Good play. Here's Benji Molina. And after Marquis owned Molina in their first few matchups over the years, 0 for 12 for Molina. Benji has uh, flipped the tables over in dramatic fashion this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. How about this, huh? Yeah. Jimmy John's delivery of the game, a home run for Benji. And then in the third inning, look at this. He goes over the auxiliary scoreboard. Hand operated scoreboard. And this ball's hit well to center field. Fowler tracks it down. One step in front of the wall. So Molina seeing the ball well, shall we say, against Jason Marquis today. 5 0, middle of five.
Five nothing, and we bring you our XL Energy fun fact for the day, and it has to do with the Giants manager Bruce Bochy, big leaguer, of course. In 1955, he was born in France. His father was in the U.S. Army, was stationed there. That's why he was born there, and he is one of eight big leaguers to have been born in France. The other two that you'll know on the list, Steve Jeltz, who played shortstop for many years for the Philadelphia Phillies, and I think he was traded to the Royals in the latter stages of his career. And also, Charlie Lee was born in France. He pitched a no-hitter this month in 1981. Drew, George? Once again, Mark, you are a wealth of information. More than 10,000 homes in the U.S. are getting their energy entirely from solar power. Marmus fouls that off. Find out how you can, too, by visiting responsiblebynature.com. And the Rockies going green. They put those panels in a few years ago. Solar power. 0 and 2. Boy, that's a fastball, George, that cut away from Barmas. That's an impossible big, big, pitch. Big time cutter that time that he threw that pitch on the outer half at 92. On the Hyundai cam, you can see this come right out of the hand and watch this ball just dart. Look how far out Molina has to reach to catch this baseball. Almost a full body turn, a swing and a miss by Clint on the Hyundai cam. Hey, by the way, the, hot dollar, uh, the dog night's coming up. Everybody loves this. The dollar hot dog night at the ballpark. The first 10,000 through the gates on May 12th. When the Astros are going to be here, that's this coming Tuesday. It's all brought to you by Hebrew National. Oh, and one on Jason Marquet. He bounced back to the mound, and he bounced back to the mound again. That was almost identical to his, his first comeback. Marquis had topped it, hit it decently, and Kane had to reach up quickly and stab it. Two outs, Dexter Fowler, a walk and a strikeout. May eat my words about Kane, George. He's gotten through the first two hitters very quickly. He's now at 91 pitches. I figured he had to be gone after the fifth on pitch count. And maybe Dexter can extend him a little bit to Lewitsky. And honestly, that would be huge. These are big at bats right now. If you can somehow get an, extract another 10, 12 pitches out of this inning, Bochi may have to go get him after five as opposed to letting him work in the six. Well, I mean, again, this guy's a big, strong kid. It'll get up into the pitch count over 100, but not necessarily all the time. I mean, he's somebody would like to be comfortable at 100. Behind 0 and 2, fastball, then curveball for a strike. And I know some people, purists, hate hearing about the pitch count. Boy, they didn't count yeah, pitches I'm, when I started yeah. watching the game years ago. I agree with you, but. Managers, coaches, GMs pay attention to pitch counts now. It's a reality of baseball in 2009. Five nothing Giants. Third inning, man on. Benji reaches out and drives this one. 
over the wall in right field. His seventh home run. And Matt Cain, despite walking five, has allowed just one hit. And that was a Todd Helton single. Well, we talked talk about it just a minute. Five. Think about this. This guy has given up in a 25% of his starts three or less hits. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. And what's even more amazing is his record is well below 500. Well, in over 15 of his starts a year ago, he went over 110 pitches. And a lot of times with young kids, they don't let them go that deep. You know, they shut them down at about 100. Think about it, 15 times over 110. And his, what, 33 starts last year, 34 probably? Brian Sabian, if he can somehow, George, this ball's popped up and maybe playable. No, nope. look at that. Now, that tells you something about the wind right there. Yeah, the wind grabbed that thing. I thought Tulowitzki would have a play. Now, wind moved it about 10 rows deep. Think about this. If Brian Sabian comes up with a bat or two for this lineup, this giant team is really gifted. You got a great ninth inning guy in Brian Wilson. I think really underrated ninth inning guy. But their rotation, Lentz becomes a reigning Cy Young winner. Matt Kane. Look at the numbers you just threw out. Mm -hmm. He'd be an ace on a lot of people's staff. You have Barry Zito, who's pitching better, and, and of course he was paid like an ace. And, well, and he was Barry, an ace he, 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 he was. Randy Johnson's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. First ballot. And then Jonathan Sanchez, who you throw out of the five hole, is a lefty who throws 95 miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, he's got a chance for a no hitter every night. That's what they like to say about him. He's that good. The point being, if they can score some runs, which they haven't at all, I mean, they've been dreadful offensively. They have the worst run support in terms of their starting pitchers in all of baseball. I mean, this is, for them to have five runs up there, yeah. they're having a party right now. Well, I think that was one of the big push. Oh, man, that caught him, caught him on a shin there. He's still going to get look, Yeah, Tulowitzki is going to get Randy win. And you just hope Marquis okay. Yeah, he's walking around like he is. Kind of ricocheted off the foot. Reflected it more than anything else. Well, I think that, uh, and probably looking back at it now, you're going to get a shot of this one more time. Yep, just ricocheted. I don't know, maybe the glove, but, you know, back last winter, Drew, you're talking about the one big bat. They were trying to sign Manny Ramirez. They, they were. were going after him hard, all tied to a guy named Ted Ulander who passed away. And uh, Teddy, a good news, you very well know, a very close and dear friend of mine. Ted was the one guy pushing it harder than anybody because he had had him in Cleveland and knew what kind of guy Manny was. Here's Rich Aurelia. And I want to speak for a lot of people around baseball. They'll miss visiting with uh, Ted. Oh, we man. got to see him quite a bit because he worked for the Giants and he was advancing. Lived just a little bit north of Goodman, Kansas on a ranch out there. Had a place here in the mountains. His wife, an avid skier. His daughter, an Olympic uh, skeleton. She's a, yep. a, a she, I don't know how you say ride the skeleton. She's one of the foremost mm -hmm. skeleton Athletes in the world. Yes, she is. Here's the one-one. Aurelia misses one and two. One out. Juan Uribe is on deck for the Rockies. Next inning, they'll have Tulowitzki, Helt, and Spillboards. Five nothing Giants. One hit for the Rockies. Deep short, a lot of time for Tulowitzki. Throw out Aurelia. That's the second time he's gotten rich, George, from the outfield grass. Well, they rich three ground balls to the left side. Why? Well, most guys, as they get farther along in their careers, they start to cheat on the fastball, and you get a ball that's sinking into the right hander. He's going to pull a lot of those balls on the ground. Troy George has committed just one error this year, and it happened fairly early on. And I commend him because I I'd pay just to watch him play defense. And the reason I say I commend him, some guys, Frazier, and I guarantee you, you played with a bunch of these guys. If, if they're not hitting like they want, oh, they yeah. take the glove out mm -hmm. to the field or they the bat really, out to the field. I yeah, think. they do. There's no question they do. They did a lot of effects, everything that they do. Running the bases, playing the defense, always got their jaw on the ground, stood up, and you don't see that with Troy. And I think probably because of what history has happened with him, so started in the April prior to this one. And, he just and it turns on in May, and it turns June, July, and they'll get back to those career numbers, as I mentioned the last couple of days. Good hitters, guys that uh, have an extended time in the big leagues, they'll level off to the career number. It's a 2-1 to Arebe, and here's a chance for Stewart. And he 
Williams with it. A good inning for Marquise, retired five in a row. Rockies must get something going. They're down five nothing. takes you inside the big games each night. Our team of experts break down the keys to the game, plus go inside batting practice and uh, see Alana go through a pregame warm-up with conditioning coach Brian Jordan. All of that on Insider today on FSNinsider.com. Join this afternoon. Here we go, sixth inning. Matt Cain still out there. The sun not shining on the Rockies' offense. Tulowitzki looks at a curveball, high ball one. Tulo a walk and a strikeout. Five punch outs for Matt Kane. It's fouled off. Last year, Matt Kane had the worst run support in baseball 3.14. You know who was number two on that list? Another good pitcher who had a tough year. Aaron Harang of Cincinnati. Harang's turning around this year. Greg Maddox was third. Peavy fourth. You, know, you just look at the teams in pitchers' parks who didn't have good offenses, the Giants and the Padres, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the 1 1 on Tula. Yeah, that's, that's where it. Whitey Herzog came into Bush Stadium and said it's very hard to hit a lot of home runs at Bush Stadium. And when he took over, he made it a, a run oriented team. The trouble is, there's not that many guys who go group up to make it a run oriented team in San Diego or in. in uh, at AT&T in San Francisco. Yeah, the, the irony is, George, both of these teams are slow, especially San Diego. I mean, San Francisco has some athletes. Fred Lewis, Randy Wynn, the, you know, Randy's getting up there in years. Burris, a good athlete. Shearholtz can run a little bit. He doesn't play every day. 2-2. Two -two. And it's fouled up off uh, above us. Hey, the first 10,000 through the gates on Saturday, May 9th. Hey, that's just a little ways away. You can receive a free upgrade coupon to Frontier Airlines Classic tickets or the purchase of an economy ticket. Sponsored by Frontier Airlines. Two and two on Tulo, and he's gone. Breaking pitch probably out of the strike zone. Six strikeouts. And Todd Helton, who has the Rockies' only hit. Yeah, but see, now look, this is a slider. We talked about this last night. You look down here where Molina wanted that pitch. Here, it keeps going away on the Hyundai camera. You're going to see it. It's a backup slider. Look how tight Troy's hands were at the very beginning of that swing, and then they tried to extend and get out from it. By then, the ball's back. Todd lifts one to center field. Two outs. Look at how inconsistent the Rockies' offense has been, George. Last night, they scored 11 runs. It's a win. Final ball game in San Diego, lose 2-1 in 10 innings, one run. The night before, they get nine runs at Petco. The day before in San Francisco, they lose 1-0 in 10. The day before, they get five runs in a pitcher's park. That's a, that's a winnable uh -huh. total, and they get a win, 5-1. Previous day, they lose 3-2. to two. 
the day before they're back here against San Diego they score seven runs so it's on again off again on again off again and that's exactly what the Rockies have done in terms of wins and losses the day before that against the Padres they score three and they lose by a run prior to that they score 12 and they win going away 0 and 1 on Spilly. 1 and 1 and, and the shame of it is over the last really 10 days the Rockies starters have given them very good outings. And you always hear teams that are under 500 lament. We can't put them, put it all together on the same day. One day we pitch, we don't hit. One day we hit, we don't pitch. One day we get good starting pitching. The bullpen has a bad day. That is a, a familiar refrain from teams that find themselves beneath 500. Again, it's inside. See if he goes, well, I want to see if he goes that hard cutter down and away. That was the last one Drew's talking about, 96. Cutter. Yeah. 93. Matt Cain's gotten better. He has retired seven in a row. He's allowed one hit in six innings. He's got a shutout and seven punch outs. And yeah, this is an interesting one on this day in 1999, first time ever in the big leagues, two Japanese starters faced off against one another. Hideki Arabu went against Max Suzuki. Arabu was on the Yankees, Suzuki on Seattle. Arabu would win that game. And Suzuki, of course, is a guy that became a Rocky a couple of years later. You may remember the Brett Main deal with the Royals. Suzuki came over with Sal Fasano, the catcher who was with the Rockies during spring training this year, and only had a short time here. Lost a couple of games, but going back in the history book, talking about Matt Suzuki, guys, who now is with the Calgary Vipers in the Golden League, an independent team. They start their training camp, if you will, this weekend, by the way. Wait, George, wait hold on. When, when do the Vipers start camp? This weekend. I was, I, You know what? I asked George that earlier and he didn't have an answer for he me. He didn't, huh? Shearholtz with a base hit. I was wondering. You didn't what... ask me because I could have told you because the Tucson Toros are also part of that league. Yeah. Who have been playing in an extended games, the Toros have, against the Arizona Diamondbacks. They're going to play six against them and some junior college in preparation for that start of that league. I didn't need to know about the Toros. May I need, 29th. I needed, to, I needed to know about the Calgary Vipers. Why? You're going to go try out? No, I don't think they want me. Why not? How did he get that bunt down? Oh, man, now it's a circus. That was ugly from Jump Street. Barmas got tied up with the runner, couldn't handle the throw. Everybody's safe, first and third. Marquis, in his haste to pick it up, thought he had to play at second. 
dropped the baseball, and then he had the out of course at first. Uh, and now Kane got this yep. bunt down, George. Well, I was right at him, had the ball up, and he looked at him just bend over backwards to keep from getting hit, and he's running up the first baseline on the throw coming in. Well, he wasn't him, in actually. the 45 box, was he? Remember the play with Dexter? Yeah. We got to look at that one again. Coming up the line, did he stay in there? Well, obviously, Jerry Davis behind the plate. Uh, Bob Apodak out to talk, talk to Marquis. There is some activity down in the Rockies bullpen. Here's the Matt Malau. Here he is coming up the line right here. Marquis dropped the ball, then had you to go back what? to get he it. Should he should be out. It. Should be out. He's not in the box. Yeah. Honestly, right back there. See, there's Jerry looking at him straight up the line. He was not. He was not in the, in the uh, 45 foot box. Matt Bilal, yeah, Matt Bilal warming up with Jimmy Wright looking on. Second Rockies error, and both are on marquee. You know, the Rockies' last three errors have all been on the pitcher. Up the middle with the infield drawn in. That finds a hole for Freddie Lewis. And it is six to nothing, San Francisco. Second RBI of the year for Freddie Lewis. <laughs> Let's uh, very quickly tell the fans the first 15,000 to come through the gate, uh, gates on Mother's Day, May 10th. And the Florida Marlins will be here. You get a reusable grocery bag courtesy of King Supers. Purchase your tickets to the ball game on Mother's Day at a Rockies ticket outlet or just go online to ColoradoRockies.com. Emmanuel Burris. Buying a little time right now. That's what this is all about. Chris Iannetta to jump out there. Bilal started to, to work late. To get loose, he's trying to do it as quick as he can. Uh, down in the bullpen, Jimmy Wright asking. He's making a move towards the phone. Ring down there, Bob Apodaca. You'll get that call once you get loose and you get the eight more. I'll tell you that he's ready. Clint will make that move. Clint's going to make the move when the phone rang, and here he comes. And also, the Giants are going to make a move. Matt Cain's going to come out of the ball game. Johanio Velez. Eugenio Velez is going to come in. So Kane is done. He departs with his club ahead 6 0. Matt Belisle will come on as Jason Marquis departs. Thing. Colorado's been limited to one hit, top of the seventh inning. There's a run in already for San Francisco. Fred Lewis is on first. Velez running for Kane is at second base, and Belisle is on the hill now for the Rockies. This call to the pen is brought to you by Comcast Digital Home Phone Service. Warm up to unlimited local and long distance. Call 800 Comcast. Well, I worked two innings, scoreless innings against the Giants uh, last Sunday. What an owner, run average still bumped up there because of a couple of bad outings, seven strikeouts in ten innings. Nobody out here in the seventh. The Rockies trail is six to nothing. Oh, 
what you have to hope if you're the Rockies get out of this inning and produce a couple of big innings against the setup guys. Try the Giants. Yep, you got Kane off the field now. Yeah, you got Kane off. You're going to get Wilson. Jeremy Affelt's warming up. The Rockies will send up Brad Hop, Ionetta, and then Ian Stewart. Two out of three left-handers. Still have Atkins on the bench from the right side. You can put in for Stewart if you wanted to. Offer at it. Nope. Ball one. Stewart's not going to have a play either. Couldn't pick it up with the bare hand. He had to hustle because Burris runs well. And now the bases are loaded for Pablo Sandoval. He'll give him a hit. Yeah, very difficult play. You're playing right there on the grass. And when this thing comes in off of it, I think it's got to get two. But see what Stewart did. He broke back first and then in. By the time he got in there, he's going to have to bare hand to make the snap throw over. You got the San Francisco Giants 09 track team on the base paths right now. Velez at third, Lewis at second, Burris at first. Probably the three fastest guys they have on their roster. And Sandoval at the plate, their leading hitter. Pablo is 0 for 3. He did have an RBI ground out in the third. Hitting 316 coming in. Only 300 hitter on their club. Sandoval 0 for 2 on the season with the bases loaded. The Giants are hitting 250 with the bases loaded. Good pitch by Belial. 0 and 2. Sandoval, a 308 career hitter in the minor leagues. So this is not a fluke, what he's done at the big league level. Last year he hit well over 300 in a short period of time with the Giants. He's over 300 again this year. Switch hitting catcher, first baseman, third baseman, wherever you need He's oh, it's not Pedro. Twice I, I saw Pe Pedro Feliz is one of those guys that's going to be a third baseman for a long time there. He moves on. And then to try to find somebody coming back in on the backside of it all, they were able to get a hold of a guy like this young kid that was brought up out of necessity. But man, he just turned the corner. And he just, he's done just a wonderful job. You know, it, it, I, I mentioned this last night, George. For a few years, the giant system, other than you know, Tim Lincecum naturally, Matt Cain a few years ago, hadn't produced a, a ton of players, certainly position players. They're pitching rich again in their system. Swung on it, fouled off at the plate. Keeping Sandoval's at battle line. But you know what else they have coming? The Florida State star, Buster Posey. He's there and he's playing very, very well. And uh, again, out, uh, where they're starting to draft more position. Dick Tedrow's a guy that runs a lot of that draft and sees a lot of it overseas, the former pitcher. You know, he never, everybody says you can never have enough pitching. I think you start getting more position guys too. And the O2's fouled off. I mean, you look out at, at their lineup and you say, all right, who's homegrown? Of note, I mean, in the middle of their lineup, Benji Molina's obviously you know, originally came out of the Angels organization. Randy Wynn, Tampa, and then Seattle. This 
Sandoval was watching Todd Helton's at bat last night. He's trying to duplicate that. Let's hope he does. Helton had that 13 pitch at bat that resulted in a home run in the Rockies bullpen. Colorado's been out hit nine to one in this game. Coming into the ball game, the starting pitcher for the Giants had received zero runs of support in four of the previous five ball games. Matt Kane who reached in this inning and was removed for a pinch runner and has gotten a six spot. Steve Holm behind him doing some quick pull ups. It remains a two strike count on Pablo Sandoval. The base is loaded. All right, Doug, you count. You're starting many? to act a little bit like Kelton. He's had ten, nine pitches. How many have been fouled off to the left side? Six of them. See, he watches everything. Sandoval since April 16th has the seventh highest average in baseball. Number one on that list, Todd Helton. He also has 10 extra base hits over the last couple of weeks. He hit just 179 the first eight games of the season. And this is going to go out now. He's getting closer though, George, to getting out on the playing surface. I don't like good hitters like this that get so many looks at all the different things you have to offer. Fastball curve, slider change, continue to fight it. You're making nasty pitches. You're just they're trying to lift it. You're trying to get it on the ground or swing it a miss. We've seen that before. Foul ball? Yeah. Sad news for baseball, George. Danny Ozark passed away mm. today at 85, former Philadelphia Phillies yeah. skipper. Baseball has lost a lot of good people this year. It has. Ozark managed the Phils to three division titles. Here's the 0-2 again outside one and two. Win again three to one over the Mariners. A's having a nice day. And another think, foul ball. Matt Holiday is hit his fourth home run. I'm sorry, well, that's what I was just getting ready to say. When they see the Oakland A's scores flash up like that, a lot of times they, they automatically, what's Matt Holiday done today? And that's only natural after what he accomplished here in Colorado. Yeah, Matt uh, off to a slow start. Offensively, but uh, he's come on. He's hit all of his home runs in the month of May. The average right now at 233 for Matt, but you know that's going to head north. 
Too good a hitter not to. One ball and two strikes. And this ball in the air to shallow left, and Tulowitzki goes back and makes a catch. So after a long battle, Belisle able to get an out from Pablo Sandoval. Well, if you get a ball 14 on the ground, fourteen pitch at bat. You get a ball on the ground now with Molina up at the plate. It really increases the opportunity for a double play ball. Not only was that a fourteen pitch at bat, George, there was only one pitch that wasn't a strike. Is that called pounding the strike zone? That would be a definition. Benji Molina, home run in the second, two run home run in the third, and he nearly hit one out in his last at bat in the fifth inning. Dexter Fowler caught it right in front of the wall in deep right center field. Strike, second inning. Left center field for Benji. And then in the third inning, he's going to go to right field. Trust me, he did. Third season in a giant uniform for Benji Molina. 78 RBIs in 070 at 91 last year. And when you look out there and you look at the box scores, you remember Benji from Anaheim and briefly in Toronto? You don't think cleanup hitter, but it's worked out out of necessity in San Francisco. 16 home runs last year, 19 the year before. He hit 19 with Toronto. 19 is his high water mark. And he's on pace to blow that away. He's got seven already this year. Career 277 hitter. The thing I always like to point out about Molina, George, he does not strike out much. That's a fair ball. Benji hasn't moved. The run scores. Belial's going to throw him out. Now, Molina wants to argue, but you know what? You just drove in a run. Benji took a hat to you know knock it 450 there? feet. Well, instead, it went four and a half feet. And you're hoping the guy at third has the same reaction he's having, right? Split finger. You see that thing come out of there. Look at this. And he just barely tops it. Why did he think it was a foul ball? I have no idea. Well, he doesn't run, but but unfortunately, Velez does. He's got a ton of speed. He's going to come right up the third base line. Benji's standing there like this. Well, maybe. Well, I guess I should. Not well. Okay, I'll just hang out. Somebody bring me my catcher's gear. Four RBI day for Molina. He's driven in four of the seven giant runs. Wait, we may have found out. Further evidence as to why he didn't run, George. Watch when the ball comes up. It hit him. Yeah, it hit that's why he didn't run. Yeah, that's exactly why he didn't run. Now Benji would have hung out and argued had the run not scored. 0 oh and 2 on Randy Wynn. Bilal has thrown 21 pitches so far. Three have been balls. Just what you want out of the bullpen. Somebody going to pound the strike zone. Right. Oh, and two on Randy Wynn on the ground toward the hole. Help diving stop. And the throw to Belial is in time. Good play by Todd. In the inning, two more runs for the Giants. They lead it 7 0 as we've arrived at stretch time at Coors Field on a Thursday afternoon.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Colorado Rockies and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Colorado Rockies. Velez stays in the ball game. Fred Lewis comes out. Jeremy Affelt, the former Rocky, is aboard. This call to the pen is brought to you by Comcast Digital Home Phone Service. Warm up to unlimited local and long distance. Call 800-COMCAST. The line on Jason Marquis, six plus, seven runs, five earned. He gave up eight hits. Struck out two, did not walk a batter. Rocky's down seven and nothing as Brad Hopp, who's 0 for 2, comes up to face Affelt. And Affelt making uh, his 14 appearances. That leads their bullpen. He has five holes, which ranks third. Missed on the off-speed pitch, and it's one ball and one strike. Hop a strike out and a fly ball to center field. Rockies 9 and 12 against the National League West. That's a good curveball. 1 and 2. Another curveball. Brad Hanks tough. Hop having a good year left on left. He's having a good year when righties are out there. Real good year. Left on left. He's 261. He's hit a couple of home runs. George Dan Heron's having just an awful day today in San Diego for the Diamondbacks. Bottom of the sixth inning, he's given up two runs. Still winning though, it's three to two. How good has he been this year? Well, he's been pretty special. That's what they got him for. Three and two. Right, the Diamondbacks trying to tread water. Tell you more word on Brandon Webb. Left field, Velez is going to run out of room. Brad Hop has broken the ice against his former teammate Jeremy Affelt. It's seven to one on Hop's fourth round tripper. And 18 RBIs now for Brad Hop too. Takes over the team lead over Helton, who had 17. I mean, fastball, he hit his location right on the outside corner. He just got a strong man at home plate, Brad Hop. Left the yard in a heartbeat. This ain't deep fly ball out in the left field. His strength and the ball hanging on that bat a long time. Chris Iannetta has walked twice. Rockies lead the National League with 36 home runs. Take a look at our Firestone leaderboard. It concerns slugging percentage. The Phil's number one, not a surprise. Cardinals, number two. And then the Rockies. There's a couple of areas that the Rockies have done, at least through the first month of the season, a little better than most people would have expected. Stolen bases for one, home runs certainly, and, and therefore slugging percentage. The problem is it has not translated to enough victories. This ball is in the air to right center field. Shearholtz makes the catch. One out, and that'll bring up Ian Stewart. Matt Daly warming up in the bullpen for the Colorado Rockies right now.
talked about the Marlins coming to town beginning tomorrow. The Braves won today 4 to 2 over the Marlins. Marlins with the two runs. Both provided by Hanley Ramirez. Solo home runs for Hanley Ramirez. His fourth and fifth of the year. He's always fun to watch, George. Yes, he is. Good hook there from Affel, and it's one and one. Maybe this will help Ian Stewart, George, facing a lefties. Four for 11 against lefties, hitting 364. Came in at just 182 right on right. He's 0 for 2 today against Matt Kane. Rockies got to get their third baseman going. Garrett Atkins, now Ian Stewart. You're not always going to be hot. You're not going to have eight guys steaming at the same time. You'd like to have at least a couple. And right now, Helton's red hot. Well, hop swinging about well. Brad's been very consistent. Full count on Ian Stewart. by a bunch at 95. Bob Howery, the one-time Chicago Cub, is tossing in the Giants' bullpen. Here comes Dave Rigetti. Scoreboard reminder or, or something mechanical that Dave Forgetti may have seen, George? Well, to go out and buy a little time too with Howry with the right handers coming up. Burton's in the on deck circle to go out and say, hey, don't try to rush through this thing, allow him back into the ball game. Go where the pitch is comfortable for you. And, and, and that's what you try to do. You don't try to go out and give them too many thoughts to, to screw them up in their minds saying, I'm doing this, this, and this. And you just need to do one thing to get the ball where you need it to go. Barmas pulls it to third. Sandoval bobbles. He's able to get the lead runner in Stewart. So Barmas will trade places with Stewart, and that'll bring up Matt Burton to pinch hit. And Matt Burton went deep last night against Randy Johnson. He's had two starts since being recalled from. Colorado Springs and both have come against the big unit. <laughs> Takes ball one. Crowd at 23,453 on a Thursday afternoon. And Burton holds up 2 0. Make its way into foul territory.
everything seems to be cut in that he's throwing, which tells me he's getting a lot of pressure on the outer half of the ball, trying to push it to that uh, inner half of the right-handed hitter. Get good extension to the plate. At Coors, he was pretty good, folks. 53 ball games, three and overall record, 258 save. Two two, and we see three of those now. Kind of squibbed foul, so we're keeping the bat alive, trying to find a pitch a little further up in the zone, something he can handle. Two outs, Barmas at first. Brad Hopp led off the inning with a home run to get the Rockies on the scoreboard. Colorado has two hits today. Todd Helt with a single back in the fourth. Todd now with a 10 game hitting streak. And that is a shattered bat. Sandoval high throw, staying on the bag though, was Rich Aurelia. Tell you what, that kid does move well, doesn't he? For a big man, 5'11, 200. 45 250 pounds Brad hop opposite field home run his fourth of the year will go to the eighth 7-1 San Francisco The course light freeze cam. How about this play by Todd Helm? Diving to his right. Getting Randy Wynn at first with a little help from Matt Belisle. That's the Frost Brute Course Light Freeze Cam. Todd Helm doing it with the bat. He can still do it with the glove. We go to the eighth inning. Matt Daly is on. He's the third pitcher utilized today. Again, Marquis went six plus, gave up seven runs, five earned on eight hits. Matt Belisle. Finished up the seventh inning. Gave up a hit, nothing else across for Matt. Or excuse me, for, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, for Matt Belisle. And now Matt Daly's in there. Too many Matts, George. Well, this guy uh, the other day suffered the loss in San Diego in the extra innings. But he will keep the ball down. Richard Rio 0 for 3. Grounded out back in the sixth inning. Average in for the season, mostly pinch hit. He does have five RBIs. He won the game against Corpus in San Francisco. Matt Daly's a kid that when he was in high school in Garden City, Kansas, he lost only one game his junior and senior year. But nobody recruited him. He was about 140 pounds. Said he was a little over six foot, six two now. And he threw in the low 80s. You'd think somebody, Division three school, Division two school, somebody would have offered him an opportunity to pitch with his record. Did not, so he called up the Bucknell coach and he said, Well, you can walk on. But we're not even counting you as a recruited walk on. You can come try out. 
And then after his freshman fall, he did very well. So he kind of caught the eye of the coaching staff there. And then he had Tommy John surgery. So he missed more than a year. But really came on, had a good summer league after his junior year, had an opportunity to sign, did not want to finish his degree. He majored in accounting at Bucknell. And then after his senior year, went undrafted. It's been a long road, but here he is, George, in the big leagues. Yep, in the big leagues, never take it away from him. Oh, and one on a rebase, stayed off that. One and two. If your windshield's chipped or cracked, don't wait. Call Colorado's number one team, Elite Safe Light Auto Glass, 303 287 5000, or visit safelight.com. Just online here, George, with the news of the day Manny Ramirez being suspended for 50 games for testing positive for a banned substance. A lot of shock around baseball, not surprisingly. Tony LaRusso was given word while he was having his pregame press conference, and he said you've got to be kidding me and then he immediately checked the schedule to see when St. Louis was playing LA <laughs> Juan Marichal who like Manny hails from the Dominican Republic the giant Hall of Famer this is uh, knocked down by Stewart it's going to go as an infield hit for a rebound If you missed it, Manny suspended for, suspended for 50 games. He was hitting 348 with six home runs. Marichal said, I was wrong thinking he was a pure natural hitter and that he would never use anything that would help a player do better. I was wrong in thinking he was clean. I'm very sad to hear a player of his caliber could be involved in such a thing. I consider it cheating the game to have a positive test. They should not be in the Hall of Fame. Anybody who tested positive. Testing positive today is crazy. And I couldn't agree with them more. How in the world can you test positive with the scrutiny that uh, and, and, the, and the testing that all players undergo? I was talking to Todd Helton before the ball game. Matt Merton, they both got tested in the offseason. I and mean, you get a call and you have 24 hours to respond. It's not like, go, hey, you know, come see me in a couple of weeks. So. Well, and if you leave, too, at any point in time, I know for the minor league players, if they leave, they have to email and tell them where they're going, what the phone numbers will be, and how long they will be gone that they could be reached while on that trip. Two on Sheerholtz outside, one and two. Yeah, and you they have everybody's number, George. I mean, they have your cell phone, your home phone, they have mom and dad's number. They, they have your agent's you. number. They have everybody's number. They call everybody and say, hey, listen, he's got 24 hours to respond because we need to get a test. To short, to Lewinsky, good feed to Barnes, and Barnes throws offline to help. No advancement for Sheerholtz, though, therefore, no error. Goes 6 4, fielder's choice, allowing Sheerholtz to reach. And Eugenio Velez will be the hitter. Now in left field, came on to pinch run a couple innings ago. Well, you know what? I think that's one of those instances where Barmy just got so far across the bag towards the shortstop side that he had to throw too far across and just misfired over to help. Not very balanced with the throw. Of course, he felt like he had some heat coming down on him, too, with a rebate. And Velez takes ball one. Velez pinch ran for Kane, actually, last inning and stayed in the ball game in left field. Travis Ishikawa's come out on deck. The pitcher spot is next in the top of the lineup. 7 1 Giants, 10 hits for the Giants. Rockies a run on two hits, the hop home run, a Helton single. They've committed two errors. Both were on Jason Marquis, who's a very good fielder. And Velez fouled it off, and then the bat went flying.
Here's the one one on Velez mm. two and one try to get him to take the uh, high heat didn't do it. That's an awfully big cut for for a speed guy, George, mm -hmm. isn't it? Try to stay on top of the ball and hit it hard. Don't try to drive it out of the ballpark. You've been watching the major league a little bit too much. Have to do a few push-ups, you get a ball in the air. That was not the cut of a contact guy. Looks like he weighs about 170 pounds. I don't think that much. Well, that's full uniform with a helmet on. And so can run. Yeah. Swung on and missed, so Daly strikes out the left. Infield hit in the inning, nothing else across 7 1 at Giants. Bottom of the eighth, top of the order for the Rockies. Exploding for 11 runs last night, three home runs, 13 hits. A reminder when the Rockies score seven or more runs, as they did last night, you get four tacos for a buck between four and six in the afternoon for a dollar with the purchase of a drink. So make sure you uh, head down to Taco Bell. You can head there in about a little more than 20 minutes. Hopefully, the Rockies rally for seven today. They'll need to do that to overcome a six run deficit. Dexter Fowler is 0 for 2 and a walk. Two strikeouts for Dex as he comes up here in the eighth inning against Bob Howry. I've always liked this guy, George. Big arm. A nice job for the Cubs for a number of years. Ninety-three mile an hour fastball is up out of the zone to Dexter. Top two guys in the Rockies lineup today: Fowler and Tulowitzki. Both walked in the first inning since then, four strikeouts. But you can't just pick on them. Nobody's hit the ball. A held single, a hop home run. And how often do you look up at the board, George, and or look at your scorebook if you're a team and you see, man, man, we've walked six guys in seven innings, and yet we've given up only one run. It's the case for the Giants today. Two hits. Kane long ball. Yeah, Kane walked five. Affel walked the batter last inning. Kane's on the plus side. Jason Marquis is on the losing end of things right now. One and two on Dexter Fowler. Wow, that's close. That's a tough one to take. Ones 
you take George, keep looking forward. Like, yeah, I know it's a ball the whole way, and just hoping the umpire doesn't ring you up. Doesn't ring you up. You're right. He set up away this time. And that's on pass. Dexter Fowler. He's had a tough day at the office. Three punch outs. Troy Tulowitzki will be next. Tulo has been the starting shortstop in all but three ball games for the Rockies this year. He had a great opening week of the season. He was a nominee for National League Player of the Week. Three home runs, five RBIs, slugging percentage above 800. What a pickup by Sandoval. Wow. wow. Whenever you know what? That's a double that, wow. That was well, a special play. You know what? When you get things going the other way and you're not hitting, then you get something like that happen. Six run lead down the line of I mean, That's right, Troy. All you do is smile. I mean, man, you can't do any better than that. You're staring about a double. That's quickness. You're talking about that big man's quickness. He's got it right there. How about that? Quick spin, and then the catcher's arm comes out. Very accurate and stretch over at first by Aurelia. A lot of guys like to watch these kind of plays be made. This one you'll see later on tonight on a highlight reel somewhere. Yeah, George, and the way he's spinning on that knee is Helton steps in. You know, it's the opposite way to get momentum in terms of uh, throwing the baseball. And yet he had a ton on it. Tulowitzki's no slouch getting up the line. Marvelous play. By Pablo Sandoval. You know, as a baseball fan, we're disappointed the Rockies are down six runs, obviously. But as a baseball fan, you appreciate talent, you appreciate youthful exuberance, a guy who loves to play, and that's that young man, 22 year old Pablo Sandoval. Smile on his face every day. Where you got me, Skip? I'll play short, no problem. Yeah, they let me play. Ball and a strike on Todd. Time for our job done right player of the series. Todd Helton, four for seven, home run double, couple of runs scored. Job done right presented by the Colorado Association of Mechanical and Plumbing Contractors. To have your next building or service project done right the first time, visit mpccolorado.org. Here's a 2 1 on Helton. On the corner, he painted the corner. Todd's had good balance 394 against lefties, 339 against righties, 345 road, 387 home. Whoa, that's a slider that had. Help skipping rope getting yeah, in the way. Yeah, and all kinds of teeth on that thing. They were biting at the top of his feet. Trying to make sure he didn't leave it up in the strike zone. You know, it's right here, just barely able to get out of the way in the backhand by Molina. Todd with the base hit today. Now 10 hits shy of 2,000. That's where he's so good, George. That's a nasty pitch. That's a nasty pitch. It's on the black. It's 93. It's tailing away. And he goes, nope, you're not getting me with this. And swings that magic wand and fouls it off. Yeah, just fouls it away. Look here on the Hyundai, Hyundai cam. He throws the hands to the baseball. But everything's pointed. The body, the, the lower half, the upper half to take that ball to the opposite field. Most guys will try to hook it. Or get the head of the bat out too quick and hit that nice little ground ball to second. And again. Same swing again. Same pitch again. You can see the league average 383 pitch per plate appearance. And then all of a sudden at the bottom side of that for help. 
4.46. Three and two again. So quick. Term in baseball used frequently, giving away at bats. Todd Helton never gives away an at bat. I don't even know if that's a fair term, but he doesn't have careless at bats. No, he doesn't. I mean, I, you know, again, some guys say giving away bats. I don't think if you ask every hitter in baseball, I don't think any of them. I know that's a term used. Right. I, I agree. You ask every one of them, they're not going to say, I don't give away anything. He just beat me that day. Right. Todd hit it hard, but positioned perfectly was a rebate. And he throws out Helton. One, two, three, eighth inning for Bob Howard. Seven, one, San Francisco. Post game report with Tom Helmer. Tom, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. After the game, we'll get down to the clubhouse, hear what Clint Hurdle has to say about today's game. Also, Kane is able to get out of that first inning with three walks and keep the Rockies off the board. We'll also talk about B-E-N-G. Whoa, two homers for Benji Molina. And if anything, I blame today on that night game in San Diego and this team getting in at 2.30 in the morning, a night game followed by a day game. They haven't got their sleep. They'll be well rested when the fish come. Tom, very nice job with the uh, with the with the nursery rhyme there. I appreciate that. Aaron Rowan is the pinch hitter, top of the lineup. Fred Lewis was removed uh, two innings ago, so the pitcher spot was in the one hole. So Rowan getting a day off, the everyday center fielder. He's been mired in a slump for most of the first four weeks of the season. Here's the one-one from. Glendon Rush. Matt Daly pitched the eighth inning, Belisle the seventh. Three and one. Emmanuel Burris is on deck. In the air to right field, Brad Hoff. Makes the catch. One out. You know, one thing that we haven't mentioned, George, before the uh, Dodgers acquired Manny Ramirez, they were 54 and 54. They're right at 500, including the work of the Dodgers this year, which has been exemplary, especially at home. They're 19 games over 500 with Manny. Oh, well, what was the Boston Red Sox with Manny in their lineup? Well, my point about is about hundred games over five hundred. You know, my point yeah. is, and the Dodgers are still very talented. How will they handle first the immediate aftermath of the shock of coming to the ballpark and realizing, you know, your your offensive leaders is, is not going to be around for a couple of months, and then how will they keep it together playing fifty ball games? Well, here's my deal. Why? Here's the biggest thing I think that they're, they're going to be faced with more than anything else. 
is the media onslaught on each individual player on your opinion of man they're going to get worn out yeah i mean i saw mike crook go outside in the hallway just a second ago and he said where are you guys going who do you got and i said i got florida this weekend i said you're going to mannyville and he goes oh don't yeah. remind me yeah you know because they're going to ask them their opinions because of the experiences with barry bonds the difference is barry bonds never tested positive but they're still going to have to deal with it and all the questions that go along with it That's, that's going to be a huge distraction for them. Now, saying all of that, they got the right guy leading it for somebody to defer the heat away in Joe Torrey. He knows all about media. Well, he knows how to media and, and defer heat. I mean, he had to defer the heat of Steinbrenner off of the players for so long, the media heat on guys for so long in New York. This ball is line foul. He had to deal with George, you know, A-Rod and, and Jeter. Do they like each other? Do they, do they not like mm. each other? So he just got mad and wrote a book, settled it all. <laughs> His intent, I talked to him about yeah. that in all seriousness, uh, not that he confides in me, but he said the intent of the book, and he said this to a number of people, Stewart will throw out birth, was not a kiss and tell book at all. Joe Torrey's much better than that, doesn't need to do that. But what the media is naturally going to find in a book is they're going to try to find the one, you know, maybe tidbit that is somewhat sexy and can make headlines. And, and that's what they did. Joe Torrey was talking about his you know, time in, in the dugout in New York. And well, they're all going to gather around this afternoon in L.A. They've already gathered around, of course. Two outs. Sandoval at the plate. 0 for 4. He's driven in a run, though. Most of the next 50 will be outside the division, not only for the Dodgers, but really for every team in baseball. Once the, the first month or so is over, you get into playing outside your division. You get interleague play in June. In fact, the Rockets, well, toward well, the end of May, will be an interleague play. They'll play at Detroit. The one thing about the, the Dodgers, they have a tremendous amount of talent. They have a tremendous amount of home run power hitter speed at the top of their lineup. Deep in the hole, and Tulowitzki had it run up his leg a little bit. That's a play that Troy has patented. I think he makes that play better than anybody in baseball. See how they score it. Well, here's another look at it. Playing slightly over into the hole with the left-hander, trying to work the fastball inside. Came over to field the baseball, hit right off of him. Rolled up, uh, rolled up the arm. No official scoring yet. Sandoval at first. Benji Molina at the plate. And Molina hits this ball to left center field. Going first to third is Sandoval. Molina will stay at first base. It is now being scored in error. That's the Rockies' third of the ball game. So E6 on Sandoval. Hit to Tulowitzki. Mm -hmm. Just the second error on two whiskey. No rush, it always seems to happen that way. You get two quick outs, make an error, next guy gets a base hit. You just hope you will prevent any kind of a more damage being done. Get out of the inning. Randy Wynn comes up. Outside on Wynn. This is a base knock to right that's going to drive in an unearned run. Coming home is Sandoval. It is 8-1 to one as Wynn has his 10th RBI of the year. By the way, with Manny in the lineup with the Red Sox, they had an overall record of 7-0-6. 706 wins and 536 losses. Nearly 57% winning percentage. Pretty good. Rich Aurelia. He's eight runs for the Giants, the most they've scored in a road game this year by a couple. The previous high was two days ago at Wrigley Field when they won six to two.
Padres have tied up the Diamondbacks in the eighth inning at 3 3. Tampa and the Yankees later on tonight again. Tampa won that ball game last night in extra innings despite the Yankees late rally. Tampa's got most of their wins this year George against Boston. Yeah five and two overall I think against Boston right now it's pretty amazing they've uh, played very well against the Red Sox where the Yankees have what a division race that's going to be if I mean if it holds up and it's early very early we all know that. I mean Toronto's off to a good start under Cito Gaston again. You have Boston. You know they're going to be there. Tampa's better than than they've played so far. The Yankees Yankee fans hope are better than they've played so well, far. I didn't think they're pushing a rod a little bit quicker to get back. They're talking about maybe being here on Friday and ready to go into their lineup in New York and I'm. I'm just like you know that they're trying to rush it along to divert what's going on to say oh a rods back he's going to fix everything. Well he's not ready he's not ready they hit two home runs yesterday an extended game in Florida and their uh, complex down in Tampa actually went four for six with a couple of home runs made some plays in the field and another home run a couple of days ago. They got a pitch better though. It's a 2 2 swung on and missed. Good off speed pitch by Rush as he strikes out Aurelia. In the inning, there were a couple of hits. There was an error, and the Giants produced their eighth run of the ball game. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Spielborg's hop and Ionetta. Today and the Rockies have played a sloppy game defensively. They have three errors. Today at 5:30, we're going to carry the Manny Ramirez press conference from Los Angeles. Again, Manny earlier today suspended for 50 games for violation of Major League Baseball's drug policy. There'll be a press conference. We'll have it right here on FSN Rocky Mountain, beginning at 5:30 in the Mountain Time Zone. Well, San Francisco in the ninth inning will turn to Justin Miller to get the final three outs they hope. Nine games that he's pitched in on the year 174 earned run average a veteran from the Florida Marlins originally with the Colorado Rockies 10 in the third innings pitched on the year. And the first pitch to Spielborgs is out of the zone Spielborgs a walk in the first fly ball right field and a strikeout Rockies in the game. And struck out eight times. Matt Kane got seven of those. And this ball is going to drop in left center field for a knock. 
take a look at our quest in game box. Not much to show offensively for the Rockies. Their only run came on a Brad Hop home run in the seventh inning against Jeremy Affel. Three of the four home runs for Hop have come against left handed pitchers. Our quest in game box, and here's Brad at the plate. Slider on the outside corner for a strike. Two pitches he'll feature is that hard slider and a good sinker down and away. Likes to get a lot of ground ball outs. Pitching matchup, George, for tomorrow night. Jason Hamill against Ricky Nolasco. Ricky's off to a slow start. One yeah, he pitched, eight with a yeah, seven plus ERA. Pitched very well against the Rockies a year ago. You're right. He used to have struggled. Looking forward to Saturday's matchup. Jorge uh -huh. De La Rosa gets big Josh Johnson. Yep. Should be a good one. Johnson has thrown well. Aaron very Cook, well Aaron Cook George on Sunday against Chris Volstad who's throwing the ball well another high school signed by the Florida Marlins Me and Johnson both high school kids three balls and a strike on Brad Hop. haven't looked that far ahead George with Houston Cohen the Rockies may see Mike Hampton this ball's pulled foul Well, Hampton, Hampton, went, Hampton went, went, went. He went last night. Last night was Wednesday, so they're going to miss him. We'll go Monday. If they play Monday, they yeah. may not miss him. Yeah. If they have an off day as well, right. Brent's going to check the Houston schedule. He may pitch on Tuesday here. Three and two on Brad Hop. And this ball is hit well to right field. Sheerholtz, though, is going to get it. They do have an off day Monday, so there's a very good chance that uh, Mike only, Hampton will well, that series too. Yep, the only way he wouldn't is if uh, skip over him because of the off day is the fifth guy or whatever how their rotation sets up. Keep somebody else online. Clubs will do that at times. I doubt they will. Give them the opportunity to pitch here on uh, Tuesday. I and added two walks and a fly ball to right field. Two and zero on Chris. Ionetta leading the club with six home runs. He's driven in, driven in eleven. Uh, Move the average up though, just one ninety seven. That's inside three and zero. That also a strike, so it's three and two. The Giants all time, they've had some good hitting teams, especially when Barry was playing with the Giants and Jeff Kent. Rich Aurelia was in his heyday. They brought some really good offensive clubs in here. They've hit more home runs at Coors Field than any other opponent. Velez makes the catch. Two outs. And the Rockies down to their 27th out. Ian Stewart coming up. This afternoon's Land Rover extraordinary play of the game. Well, it's uh, a series of pitches from Matt Kane. He started out slow, walked four in the first two innings, but he lived to tell about it. He ends up allowing just one hit, seven strikeouts in six shutout innings. Land Rover designed for the extraordinary. Stewart is 0 for 2 and a walk. And with 
with two outs. Billboards not being held on. He moves up to second. As you're well aware, I'm sure that is not a stolen base. Not contested. Here's the 2-0 to Stewart. You know, sometimes, George, obviously you get a one-run ball game, you go up to the plate, and you're going to take a strike late in the game. When you're down this many, if you see a good one, swing at it. Uh, you got to whale away. you got to whale away because it's going to take an extraordinary run. This ball's whaled on right field, deep, and gone. That's what, that, that's what I meant. You can't just take pitches. You got to hit it 450 feet. You got to get your buddies on board to hit a couple more. Two one count. You just went away at it, huh? Home run number four for Stewart. It may not be enough, but you know what? It's what Ian Stewart needed at this moment in time. Against the left-hander too, he'd struggle. Or excuse me, a right-hander. He'd struggle against right-handers on the season. Surprisingly, he didn't struggle on this one though. Ball got out of here. Bunch of happy fans have stuck around to watch the bottom of the ninth and right field. And that will allow Clint Barmas to come up. Barmas 0 for 3. RBIs 12 and 13 for Ian Stewart. Ian Stewart, George. Generates a ridiculous amount of bat speed. Well, he really does on the Hyundai Cam. You can see this on a pitch that's breaking down and away from him, and then just that top hand roll and the extension. Eight to three. Rockies have hit a couple of home runs in the game. Brad Hopp, the other. Here's Miller to the plate. And this should do it. Popped up behind second base. Juan Arribe, the former Rocky, tucks it away. And the Giants and Rockies split their mini two game set. The Rockies win 11 to 1 last night. And this afternoon at San Francisco 8 at Colorado 3. Benji Molina, the hitting star, he drove in four. He had a pair of home runs.